splashes in the water like a pigeon in a fountain. He is young. His heart beats fast. Younger than I'd expected. Too young. I am sure he'll perform the ritual correctly. Leaning towards her eagerly like a shoot that's never seen the light. A sensible thing to be friends with the sun. The one who comes too close may be burned. <laughs> if the king likes him, better for us all. This is the oath of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, king of the world. This is the oath of the son of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, king of the world. This is the pact of the great Nakia, queen of Sennacherib, scorpion seal. This is the pact of the great king's mother, queen of Sennacherib, scorpion seal. By all the gods of great Assyria, and by all the gods of Babylon, swear, I will not sin against Esarhaddon nor raise my hand with evil intent. Not against his family, none of his household. I will not raise my hand with evil intent. I swear. You shall serve only with truth. Speak only with truth. Say nothing of evil about Esarhaddon. I swear. If you hear any evil, improper word against Esarhaddon, from the mouth of his enemy or of his ally, from his uncles or one of his brothers, from your sons or daughters, mother or father, word of a prophet, ecstatic or star, you shall not conceal it. You shall report it to me, report it to Nakia, the mother of the great king Esarhaddon. I shall report it. If you create evil in your heart and bring it to bear against Esarhaddon, the planets will strike my fate from the sky. If anyone speaks of insurrection, I shall destroy their seed from the land. If you assist plotters against Esarhaddon, the king of the gods rain disease on my house. If you keep silent of any conspiracy, the king of the gods will open my wounds. If your heart even thinks of breaking this treaty, the god of the heavens will clothe me in leprosy. Just as this oil, enters your body, so may this oath enter my body, just as this water enters your flesh, so may this oath become part of my flesh. If you forsake Esarhaddon, just as this wax is melted by fire, so may my figure be burned in the fire, just as lambs are slit open and their entrails roll down to their feet, so may the entrails of my sons and daughters roll down to their feet. Hail Esarhaddon, renewer of peace, great king of Assyria, loved by the gods, who bound Elam by treaty to leave us in peace, renewer of shrines, loyal to the gods, restorer of Babylon, rebuilder of peace. Hail Esarhaddon, beloved by all gods. You are now fit to enter his presence. Chief scholar, chief physician, take the exorcist Esarhaddon. I have never sworn such an elaborate oath. Esther had on this fond of ceremonies. You had better like it. That's why you're here. Did you have to swear it? All members of the king's household swear it. But long ago, it was simpler then. How? Fewer curses. Every year he adds more curses. The vassals swear it. The governors swear it. On his accession, every subject in his empire had to swear it. But you are too young to remember it. <laughs> Tweet them, though. It's not a sure in half, am I? What? We heard you come from Babylon. My father is the Shitamu of a card. All troublemakers come from Babylon. I'm Aramean by birth. <laughs> the Arameans are even worse. I'm culturally Babylonian. <laughs> We're glad to welcome Babylonian scholars back into Assyria. Esarhaddon has been generous to us. It's not Esarhaddon you have to thank. And what do you mean? He means that the gods have reversed their decision. Long way to the king's chamber. Could easily lose my way. Oh, you'll never walk down here alone. Here, put this on. Why? It is an ancient custom. Greetings to the king, my lord. Good health to the king, my lord. May the gods of Assyria have blessed your reign. I bring the new exorcist before you. His name... You can speak for himself. <laughs> Greetings to Esarhaddon, great king who loves loyalty and abhors treachery. You who restored my city of Babylon, who raised it out of salty marshland and planted it in new fertile soil. You who have raised me like a mud 
Break to the top of Margaret's temple, my lord. I thank you for accepting me in service. Tell me, what is the state of Babylon? Are the people well? Do they serve their gods? You restored to us our old privilege, our divine statues, even our exemption from military service and tribute. How could we be anything but grateful? I hope you speak for more than just yourself. But I am glad to hear it. Now tell me, what did you see on the way to the palace? What do you mean, my lord? What did you see on the way to the palace? Did any omens cross your path? Any animals, birds, strange occurrences? I saw some animals near the markets, but nothing my lord should reckon as strange. What did you see? Uh, there were some pigs at the side of the road. Of what colour? Black. And an ox standing next to them. Of what colour? Dappled, I think. And what did you make of this? Did it glare? Forgive me, my lord, but I did not watch. I did not prepare to see a patient. The body after which I inquire is a body of troops. The health which I question is that of Assyria on which it depends. Forgive me, my lord, but may you explain how I should connect these omens with this? The gods hide their signs everywhere. Urdanar, take him down to the storeroom. Together you will decide which medicines to take to Egypt the sooner we depart. Yes, my lord. Alasi, stay. I must speak with you. What do the omens say of these animals? You should not worry about them, my lord. The will of the god is as, is as remote as the innermost heaven in which they reside. The clues may not lie where we think. The omen series say that if he sees a black pig, then the patient will reach a crisis and then recover. But if he sees a dappled ox, that patient is afflicted by a curse. Then all is well. This crisis will subside, and Assyria will recover its health. The Nubians, with their oxen-headed gods, will drag my yoke once again. I will drive to Harker back to the south and put an end to these rebellious plots. So you've met the new exorcist. What do you think? He does not seem to be what you say. He has an excellent reputation in Babylon, and has trained with experts from Egypt. He may have new ideas. As long as he knows the old laws also. A reputation may be made of lies. When I fell ill in Babylon, ensnared by the invisible noose of witchcraft, I was dining at his father's hall. It was that son who came to my aid. So I have seen his power to break the bonds, the harnesses which drag us towards death. Well, we will watch him and see what he does. He will always be under the watch of Ur and I. He will never be left to act alone. That old dog that drags his tail in the dust. Both will be coming to Egypt. There we will see what is the merit of his new ideas. Better not to go to Egypt at all. Stay here in Nineveh where you are strong. I must go to demonstrate what happens to those who defy Assyrian rule. People may plot against you in your absence. My absence from Egypt, they plot there. You know well the reasons you should stay. The Nubians plotted against my father, forever causing him trouble and rage. I will drive them to the south and torch their border to keep them from our lands. So, like a cauterized limb, Egypt can heal and Assyria be kept free from infection. My lord is right. Egypt always was a source of trouble. This annexation is a treasure you should fight to keep. It is my duty to quell the vault. We need the timber to rebuild our temples. We need the grain to feed our empire's cities. The longer you let the Nabeans entrench themselves in Lower Egypt, the deeper they will take root and fester, like a disease that cannot be torn out. Strike now, not only to bring Assyria glory, but to secure yourself against conspiracy. What do the omens say on this matter? They are favourable, my queen. Which omens are favourable? The heavenly writing, which has been checked against the mirror. Liver. But which heavenly body? What does it say? The moon is in the path of Enlil's stars. So the moon is darkened by a shadow. The shadow falls on the quarter of Elam. It portends evil for the Elamites. There is no need for us to change our plans. You see? The gods will it. I will go. Then at least first do this. Go to Haran, to the city of the moon god. Obtain his approval for your campaign. I already have the gods' approval. But do you have their blessing? Divine aid? 
Show your devotion to the moon god scene, and he will reward you with victory. There have been rumblings in Aram of late. Unrest. Disquiet. It may not be safe. If there is any hint of trouble, I must remind the people of their oath. You must remind them of your strength. It is best to ask the gods' blessing. Best to be certain, to be sure before acting. That's what you always say, Balazi. The moon cannot see all, my lord, nor does he always show his face. Only one day each month does he reveal his true magnificence. The rest he hides. There is no shame in you doing the same, my lord. But the king must do what he thinks is best. I will rebuild the shrine of the moon god to ask that he illuminate my path. Consult him too on the question that ever troubles us. Soon learn as a Haddon's ways. Best not to question them. This is the great storehouse where all the plants of the land are kept. What are they doing? Replanting the garden. Has the soil there fallen to some disease? Last night an omen was observed. If the plough star approaches Scorpius and the crook star is black, the king's seed will be uprooted from the land. And so we uproot everything planted on his altars. You hope to transfer the evil from his sons to his plants. Assyrian prophecies always come true. What can I bring you, physician? Harvest us willow, the himbane and rue, the hemp and the poppy, garlic and sesame, saffron, turmeric, cumin and salt, the shankabi, shamutamo, shunu and krakumu, the plant called Cures 20. These are the best to soothe pain and wring it flesh split by the sword. And cure the plague and stop its spread too. Yes, I know. Bring us Ankenutu <coughs> and Ashkolalu too. The, these are not for wound or plague. No, but they have many uses. Well, tell the attendant what else you want. Mm. Bring us the plant called Cures a Hundred too. Why not take Cures a Thousand and leave the rest? It is always a thousand and the first disease. Greetings, Danke, King of the Exorcists, King of the World. We, your servants, prostrate ourselves before you. We, your servants, will kiss your feet. Good health to the Exorcists, my lord. I did not tell you my name. Your fame advances before you, my lord. What else can we fetch for you? How may we assist? I now have all the plants I need. We are the ones who tend the king's gardens. We are the ones who serve the king's kitchens. We gather all medicines. Crawl through labyrinths to deliver his messages. We bring the clay and the news to the astrologers. If you need anything, it's us, you must ask. <laughs> He'll not want for anything with her on his side. I don't know what you mean. So strange, she's famous when so young. What is their connection? I cured her when others could not. This cannot be the only reason. Perhaps they share some tie by blood, both Arameans. If we are related, I know nothing of it. You seem far more afraid than we expected, oh great <laughs> physician. Stop this. So they say you show great, great promise, a favourable future. We all have our backs to the future. Look to my past for proof of my skill. Some other way then. Connected by flesh. Perhaps Nakia is far from pure. How dare you say such words against the Queen? His loyalty is already great. Her name means pure. And she is pure, the pure vessel who bore Essa Haddon, the king who united the two lands. Is that something I should know? One so trained as you need learn nothing from lowly servants. Why are you so angry? Seized by rage, your eyes are bloodshot. Gaul spatters your guns, but I have escaped your evil spittle, and I will put a firm stop to your lips. I see how you wander about the palace, distressed, moaning like sickly doves that hide in eaves, then bellowing like wounded, captured bulls. Your speech is confused, your minds even more. It is the hand of Ninurta that causes this condition. You cannot diagnose by sight. Pray to Ninurta, see if I'm right. In the 
city of high humber lightning struck and ravaged the fields of the assyrians the king is looking for trouble i assume but why does he look for it in the house of a farmer there is no evil inside the palace and besides when has the king ever visited harry humber perhaps he thinks harry humber stands for hurrah provided there is evil inside the palace they should go and perform the ritual evil of lightning there. For it is said in the tablets, if the storm gods devastate a field inside or outside a city, that man will live in utter misery for three years. But this applies only to the man who cultivated the field. So now the king is scared of lightning? He fears the gods, and rightly so. But they struck a field, not the king's palace. You cannot say such things. Who can blame him for being watchful after he witnessed such evils growing up right beside him in his father's palace? Sons that hatched into evil snakes. Because there is no evil in the palace, but only in his mind. This is why he dilutes its power, but bringing in feeble young scholars to rinse it out with foolish words. He sees faults with their armor. How is Tanki? <sighs> he contradicts me all the time. No, not for any useful purpose, only because he thinks it looks intelligent. He thinks the appearance of competence more important to cultivate than competence itself. Perhaps we could all learn from him. What is to be learned from the babblings of a weak baby? I'm being replaced, Parsi. A weak baby is but a sound different from a competent king. The evil is in your mind now. <laughs> Easy for you to say. You who have no rival. You think? I do not have to fight. Why, only yesterday, some fool told the king that Venus had become visible, and he was afraid. But that ignoramus did not know about the synodic revolutions of Venus. It was Mercury he saw. She does not understand the difference between Venus and Mercury. We all have to watch out for ourselves. If we are to placate the king, we must work together. It is a good idea to bring in new blood. New blood that prevents the pools agonating. Esahadon knows what he is doing. He acts out of duty, not rage. This is a man who killed his own brothers. He had no choice. It was dutiful vengeance, not blinded rage. But he is able to kill those close to him. He is the great reconciliator. Not for him, his father's wars against the Elamites. He bears no grudge against Babylon, but instead tries to undo Sennacherib's damage. Be careful, my friend. I may know you are tired and angry, but if anyone else hears you talking like this... So is it true that an eclipse is coming? Who told you this? Adat Shumurutsor. The moon will come under attack three months after we leave Haran. But no matter. We will perform the ritual and avert this evil. the will of the gods. O mighty seen, who shepherds the stars across the sky. Father Nana, Lord of the shining crown.
whose crescent shape confirms the crowns of kings, hear my prayer. I, your servant, Esarhaddon, the king selected by the steadfast heart of Enlil, who trusted in the gods since childhood, who rebuilt the shrines in Babylon, returned the captive gods to their home cities. I have come to renew your shrine. And so may favourable words be set upon your lips. Determine my fate, a long life, good health and happiness. Decree victory for me in Egypt. And as I lift my hands in prayer to you, so may you lift the curse from my body. For many months now, I have been afflicted, as if a fire continually burned beneath my skin. My skin is marred with blotches, forming scales, and cracking, weeping, and forming scales again as though I were transforming into a monster, a terrifying snake. Debilitating disease is let loose upon me. Head pain has surged up from the breast of hell. Ague descended like the flood. Debility broken through the ground like plants and came upon me all together in a host. They struck my head, my features were gloomy, my eyes a flood. They wrenched my muscles, made my neck limp, threw me into convulsions. They kindled a fire in my stomach, churned up my bowels, Twisted my entrails, coughing and hacking infected my lungs. I called out to my God, but he did not show his face. I called out to my goddess, she did not raise her head. The diviners cannot explain it, the exorcist cannot appease it. I wish I knew what things were pleasing to the gods. What seems good to oneself, to a god could seem wrong. What seems abominable in one's heart could please a god like finest oil. Who could grasp the intentions of the gods of the depths? See. Since your hand bestows the disease of skin, lift at least this affliction from me. Restore my fate as one of good health. O moon god, whoever renews himself. Hail, Esther Haddon, loyal servant of the gods. You will go forth and conquer the world. The god has granted me victory. Seen has given me his crown! Reign, the reign of Esarhaddon, who returned the false pharaohs back to their proper place. I dedicate the spoils of my victory to you, O God, whose
pitiless sword cuts down pestilence, the scourge of all pestilence and all pretenders. And to you, mighty sea, who shines a lamp in the darkness and brings the will of the gods to light. Hail as a Haddon, renewer of peace. Turned home safe. Oh, the uh, Egyptians are no match for Ash and Ishtar. It was never in question. We meant not from battle, but from Haran. They say the king fell. Is it true? What happened in Haran? The moon god appeared to Esarhaddon and decreed his victory in Egypt. But this was day. Visions appear by night. Esarhaddon is close to the gods. They say the king fell. Is it true? The moon god decreed the king's victory. What happened in Haran? Esarhaddon is close to the gods. Why is the farmer appearing in public? He should not go out. He must be seen to thank the gods. His subjects must know his divine worth. Well, yes, but make sure he does not go out again. Why do you call him the farmer? Esarhaddon is supposed to be in hiding, whilst the substitute king is on the throne. Supposed to be. Patience, grandly take advice. Perhaps he believes that it would be suspicious to be in hiding after such triumph. He wants to make it public. Who is the substitute king? A slave, usually. Someone who ought to die, anyway. I don't understand. When a severe eclipse portends evil for the king, we enthrone another for a hundred days. At the end of this period, the substitute is killed. And the evil that would have beset the king is sent to the netherworld with him. <laughs> I have never heard of this before. It's a very ancient rite. It has not been performed for a thousand years. The last time it was performed, the substitute took the throne after the king died. Now, tell me, what happened in Iran? He came forth out of the temple like a god, declaring that the moon had spoken to him. His radiant face like that of seen himself blazing with the glory promised by the gods. When suddenly his eyes became wide, froze, and he fell down. Just like that? Just like that. His neck twisted to the left as he fell, and saliva dripped from his open mouth. Oh, but he recovered soon after, after a sip of water and an incantation. But why did he fall? What is the reason? In my opinion, it resembles amter sugar falling from the sky. Really? Really, for it is said in the Omen series, if he continually shouts, cries out, his neck twists to the left and saliva flows from his mouth, it is the falling sickness. As I had on has never suffered this before. The remedy prescribed for this disease was the one to revive him. Blood of doves mixed with plant sap and canutu and ashkalalu. Or an eye. do you agree? There are many reasons for a man's fall. Perhaps he had not eaten enough that day and was too weak to withstand the sun's rays as it stood in the midst of the heavens. His pulse was faint. But falling sickness, it cannot be. It is the only sickness which you have not yet tried to cure. But it is a curse of the gods. Yes, it is a curse of the moon god. His hand afflicts this disease. But why would Zin strike him down at the very moment he promised victory? And the prophecy was fulfilled. His conquest was successful. And the moon god favors him. And yet to fall down for the temple of the god of epilepsy? It is a bad sign. Whatever the cause, a very, very It is only a coincidence. Perhaps it is. Perhaps it isn't. Who can say? It must be checked. I will ask the great god Shemash. Be careful what you say. The king will not take kindly to such a damning diagnosis. It may be the only one to save him. Tell him to pray to the moon. He has already prayed to the moon. To pray again can do no harm. How is he now? He is seized by fever and ague. Let the king apply this lotion. Perhaps the fever will leave him. Now, I have prepared this oil for the king two or three times, and the king knows it. If he prefers, he may apply it tomorrow. If he should he... remove the illness. If he knows it and still is not in good health, it does not work. It... Try another. This is for fever, not antisugar. Then give him a salve for antisugar. Fine. He can try the Sobana lotion. The king should anoint himself with it at the acute period of illness. But that is long since past. Then what do you suggest? There is no other treatment. I will take them both.
Shemash Yomukin writes from Babel. The renovations of Madoc's temple advance ahead of schedule. As I hoped, you will govern that land well. Did you send silver? They have received it. And I sent 30 talents to Paul Sipper to form a new crown for the statue of Naboo. Who care well for the gods in my absence? Greetings to the farmer, my lord. May the gods, my duke and Naboo, bless the farmer, my lord. I bring two bottles from the chief physician. A lotion and a salve to remove illness. He took his time. His fever binds my bones so tight and like an Egyptian corpse. And bound alive. A living death. I came as soon as I could, my lord. And even still it moves into my ears. Continuously ringing. And ringing like a shrieking bell which none but I can hear. Send word to Haran that I will build a chapel for the moon god's wife. What did the chief physician say of this? What is the exorcist's opinion? It may be better if the farmer asks them himself for their opinion, my lord. For I am not trained in medicine's art and would not dare to jumble their queries in my mouth. Come, Alassie. Tell me what they really think. They may only tell me what they think I want to hear. I think my lord may have no fear of that. Let the exorcists perform their rituals. Let the doctors brew their lotions. Do not wring them out, for they are dry. Greetings to the farmer, my lord. May Ashra and Assyrian Ishtar bring good health to the farmer, my lord. I bring an urgent message from Haram. What do the people have to say to me? Hear me, O the farmer, my lord. I know the words of Mikal. Let the people die. Rescue your life, the lives of your family. Do not let the kingship slip from your hands. What is this panic? The people fill the streets, more numerous than locusts, ever increasing in clamour. They fill the city in its entirety. The farmer should know of the plague on his land. What is the cause of this? Was it the taxes? A woman appeared to the crowd, ecstatic, making a prophecy against your reign. This is the word of the god Nusku. Kingship belongs to Sasi. I will destroy the name and seed of Sennacherib. Her words fill Assyria like a quiver. Who is this so-called prophetess? A slave girl of the priest Belahu Utsur, enraptured in a suburb of Haran. I will cut the conspiring weasels and shrews to pieces with his feet! She is under Sassi's protection now. She casts a spell over the whole city, so that openly in the streets and squares people swear loyalty oaths to Sassi, whom they call the legitimate king. Sassi's protection? What does that matter? Interrogate the guards that brought the girl to Sissi's house and force them to bring her here to Nineveh, along with her master and Sissi himself, so that they may be the legitimate kings of the flayed men hanging from the watchtowers. May the name and seed of Sissi and all their accomplices perish. Interrogate the overseer's scribe. Find out what was said on the 28th of Adaro and why it was not reported. It will be so, my lord. But bring the slave girl here alive. So she can die. But we could find use for her and her spells here in Nineveh. These are your orders? Yes, my lord. May those who conspire against you all die. It is a false prophecy, my lord. You need not worry. It's empty as the air. Sissi is no one, and you are the king who united the two lands. And why would the vizier of the moon god put such foolish words in this woman's mouth? Someone must have seen my fall. And who has ever even heard of this prophet? She is a slave. Some priest. One of the attendants a slave must have seen my fall and started to whisper. Or else they were lurking in the shadows while I prayed and glimpsed my face. If you had not gone, you may not have defeated Taharka. The god gave you his blessing. This is the bind. The oracle of Haran has been proved trustworthy and true. They will say he supports the sea legitimately too. Only a legitimate king could win victories such as you have. Keep watch now over the palace. Survey every dark nook under the roof so that not even the moans of lonely pigeons can escape our ears. I want to hear every whisper, every rumour. Any hint of dissent is to be reported.
your son Shamash Shumakin. Astrologers in Babylon have turned treacherous. They read the skies and dissect lands, but send no report concerning the king or the crown prince. Moreover, a plier has gathered those who betrayed us to the Elamites and has signed a treaty with them. King of the lands, have no fear. What wind has risen against you whose wing I have not broken? What words have I spoken to you that you could not rely upon? I am the great lady, Ishtar of Arbella. Your enemies will roll before your feet like ripe apples. The king, my lord, must know of the crimes in Guzana. The servants of the governor are corrupt. The messengers hear every slighting remark they make. O king, my lord, their wives will bring down the moon from the sky. King of Assyria, have no fear. I will deliver your enemy for slaughter. I will sniff out, catch, and give to you the noisy daughter. Thus you shall answer the disloyal ones. Listen, sunrise and sunset. To the mother of the king, my lord, your servant, Naid Maduk. May Ashur Shamash and Maduk bless the king, my lord. May they ordain happiness to the mother of the king, my lord. After the Elamites had taken the bridge, what is this? Hail to the mother of the king, my lord. May you see one thousand years of reign for Esarhaddon. Your servant Damki reports to you as requested. Damki, how are you finding life in the palace? The palace is all paralysed by fear and no one listens to my words. They have reason to fear. Perhaps you should take heed. Have I displeased my lord? Tell me, have you yet told Esarhaddon what you call his fall at Haran? No, not yet. Why not? You swore to report all you know. I swore to report everything to you. I only wanted to be sure which ritual to recommend before speaking. Good. Esther Haddon must not know. Why not? The patient must be told of his illness. There is no need to worry him with this, as it is only speculation. Let us speculate together, and spare the king unnecessary concern. Why does my lord feel this so strongly? He must devote his mind to this revolt, not to his illness. Endless reflection on his suffering does not make him well. For if he stares forever into water, watching swirls of oil in hope of answers, the image only becomes more disturbed. Far more important that he shows his strength. If he can crush this, they will say no more about his illness. They will not dare. He will have proven it does not, does not alter his ability to rule. Very well, my lord. I have another task for you, a ritual that I want performed. Collect the crescents of his nails, recite the incantations, and send the pouch to our border with Elam and thus send the evil besetting the king out of the country. More than this, to transfer it to our enemies. This is how we will deal with his illness, or whatever evil causes it. The mother of the king is as wise as the sage Adapa. Wiser, for I do not fear the tricks of the gods. Esarhaddon is too sick to go. Take his insignia. You will be acting in his place. Very well, my lord. And give the physician this message. He will not speak of this illness that falls from the sky. Do not trust in man. Lift up your eyes. Look to me. What is this poison I have been given? Last night, I thought the scales were disappearing. Melting back into my flesh, and so before I slept, I applied the lotion the chief physician gave me for fever. But when I awoke, I was again a monster. Scales weep though they were my eyes. And they crack like scorched earth under the ever striking sun. I wish I could alleviate your suffering, but at least the king, my lord, Still has his life. I sometimes wish that I did not. That I could flay myself in this skin and burn so relentlessly. Do you wish to sing, my lord? How is the health of the king, my lord? Unveil your eyes and see for yourself. Look at my skin! Forgive me, my lord. But the lotion was all. Another condition. A Yankee thought he should try it. This bad reaction is all an accident. How many years have you been my physician? You should know what irritates my skin. He suggests obscure ingredients. 
He should have better understood them before us, prescribing them by king. Do not blame me for this mistake. Try the other bottle I sent. The other bottle? Yes, my lord. The, the other bottle was meant to remove your fever. I see. Then I will speak to Danke. Tell me, is it true that you're concerned for yourself? I have heard you are under strain. My lord. I am exhausted. I was watching over your son day and night, and after I saw him healthy again, I came immediately for the health of the king. I know not what to do. I have tried every remedy I know, yet this illness responds to nothing. And then you must rest to recover your strength. I wish I could do the same. But the state goes on forever, regardless of whether I can. Greetings, Esarhaddon, king of the four quarters of the earth, who pacifies the gods. I bring a message from Babylon. Take your leave. I thank the king for his kindness. Speak. In Babylon, the people have thrown down their work baskets. The prophecy recurs on the lips of every man. They want Sassi for king. This prophecy is burning up the land as it spreads. Worse still, the temples are whispering. Inside the great mountain, the priests are adding their voices to this clamor. Give me their names. The loudest is the chief temple administrator, the Shatamu of Akkad. Shatamu of Akkad? How did you hear of this? In the temple, the gods hear all, and those who bake their bread and bring their beer remember their allegiance to you. See that they are rewarded for their loyalty. May Sennacherib's line endure forever. The Shatamu of Akkad! His son is under the palace roof. Does he not fear for him? Perhaps his hatred of you is stronger than his fear. I don't know what to do. It seems foolish to keep him under my roof. It would be more dangerous to let him go, given all he knows about your illness. But if he's been passing everything to his father all along, most likely he already knows everything. I don't think he has. All his letters are read, and they contain no dangerous information. He may be headstrong, but he keeps the oath. I do not understand. Why would Babylon turn against me when I've done all I can to restore it? Perhaps they cannot forget the destruction of Sennacherib. They hold it against you. For you are his son. I remember well the brutal efficiency of his reign. Piece by piece he tore down the walls. He did not spare the temples of the gods, but allowed his troops to loot the ziggurat of Marduk. He did not spare the people's dwellings, but tore them all down and threw the debris in the river. He even took the topsoil from their fields to hang as a trophy in our temple. I have done all I can to atone for this since the first day of my reign. I've tried to make things right. No more should be required. Sennacher paid for his sins through a violent death. I will not share my father's fate. I will not be murdered by those I have nurtured. What does my lord intend to do? Send spies to gather more information. Extract the names, not painfully like teeth, but stealthily, like apples from a tree at night. But invite the Shatamo and his allies to Nineveh. He can tell me himself if he thinks anything is lacking, if I've withheld my aid. It may be better to wait until after the eclipse has passed, my lord. When you are able to act in public again... It seems you're trying to keep me out of the way. No, my lord. I am merely thinking about the proper procedure. But if the king would rather not perform the ritual... <coughs> the ritual must be performed. It must be done properly. It may be favourable, my lord. You can rest and recover. I'm keeping you out of sight. We'll keep you safe from assassination. Gather the names. When the hundred days
days of Rob, I will strike. I do not believe this is anti -shabon. Have you discovered something new? And what happened to King Captain? What happened to his skin? This is all your idea, and yet I'm the one who gets the blame. What is it then? You've been observing the signs for years. If it is not the falling sickness, then what is it? The disease. It must be in his mind. If it were not so, I would have cured it. You see, as well as I, how much he suffers. If it is in his mind, then it is also in ours. Well. The king has not fallen since so long. And the treatment for fallen sickness only makes him worse. So much for your reputation. I will find the demon responsible. There is nothing more that can be done. He has no more faith in us nor any treatment we prescribe him. This is why he will not get well. This is why we must regain his faith. Even if we were to remove the illness from him, we would not attribute it to us. We must keep his spirits up and suppress this anxiety which eats away at him as much as the disease itself. There is clearly more than one problem at work here. Perhaps the hand of a spirit is the cause of some of these symptoms. He has already been exercised many times. What makes you think so? I've been consulting the tablets. If his seizures affect him in the evening, it is the hand of a spirit. His ears are ringing, that is another sign. And here it is said, if the hand of a spirit turns into Andershubba, that person is sick from the hand of their city god. I sure cannot be angry with him. As I had on has done everything right. Epilepsy is caused by the star of the Marduk of Babylon. The gods do not favour him. That much is clear. Why has he been so successful? Why else has he been so ill? We cannot blame him simply because we do not know. Well, I cannot be expected to undo the work of the gods. I have been worked after death. I have been granted leave, and I intend to take it. I believe that's why I was brought in. And good luck to you. You did not tell the king about his diagnosis. <laughs> of course not. He fears Nakia more than the king himself, and she demands our silence. The silence cannot last long. It will end in a deafening clamour. It is absurd. The king ought to know. Sooner or later he will find out, and then we all will suffer. Why, the chief eunuch will know before the king. The chief eunuch? Why do you say this? I saw him talking to Erdman and I yesterday. I meant nothing by it. I don't know what they said. Here are the nail clippings you requested. What are they for? They are to be sent to the border to send the evil besetting the king out of the country. Which border? We're bound not to tell Esahaddon on Nakia's orders. She is up to something. What is it? I don't know. I only follow her orders. Which border? To the east. But Elam is our ally. Oh, I should not have told you even this. Say you will not tell the king what I have told you, or Nakia will have my head. Have no fear. I agree with her on this. It is best not to worry him for now. The mother of the king is plotting something. Whatever she is up to, I must know. For as a scholar, it is my duty to gather information, to observe all the signs occurring under the king's roof. Like the Omen series collects information about tens of thousands of events, from the movements of lizards as well as stars, to the paths of columns of crawling ants, to every kind of human behaviour. So must I observe the palace. But what to do with all this information? If one were to give equal weight to every sign, one would go mad. Esahadon is a pious king. He lives by the gods and heeds all their signs. Yet this in itself is a form of distortion. How much then is it good for him to know? Not too much. I know the Queen agrees with me on this, 
But she is no expert in our rituals, we who guard the secret law. So her actions must be checked, as any sign is checked, as the stars of the heavens are checked. For the city of Nineveh rests on a height, and I must be watchful over its fate. Greetings to the king, my lord. You have... Oh, that is the disease that falls from the sky. The king has received my letter then. I summoned you here to explain yourself. I did not wish to trouble the king, my lord, but when I heard you were already anxious, I thought it better to inform you of my thoughts. What is the cause of Antashiba? It is the hand of the moon god, seen. Because for all. Or of Marduk of Babylon, perhaps both. You're the only one who says I am cursed. My lord. The son of a traitor tells me I am cursed. I am to believe this. Son of a traitor? What do you mean? The Shitama of a card has declared himself against me. My lord, I knew nothing of this. And how am I to believe you? How do I know you're not his spy? My lord, I am devoted to your service. I have given my life to preserving yours. I would never wish to take it. You will never speak to your father again. I will not, my lord. If the lord my king is worried about spies, I know others he should suspect. Who? Oh. The chief eunuch is a good friend of my father's. They counsel each other on everything. If my father is against you, most likely he is too. The wretched woman has been caught at last. Like a snake that thinks it can evade the mongoose with slow and tortuous swerves. So she thought her meandering words could elude our blows. But the mongoose dies for the neck, and the snake thrashes its body in vain like a whip which has no bite. The verdict of the mother of the king is as final as that of the gods. Now your neck stretches to the four corners of the earth. No longer will this demon slither under your palace door. You are the exorcist of insurrection. Her crazed babble once flooded Assyria, like a muddy river that could not contain its banks, covering the land with its dredged up filth. But now she is silent. She has nothing more to say. Greetings to the farmer. He is the king, and you will call him this. He is not the one who sits on a serious throne. This is the farmer, and I will call him as you do. He is no farmer, but a king! She does not understand the ritual. Don't listen to her. Where is he? We do not know. He was not in the house where we expected him. If this woman is a vessel of the gods, she will know where is to see. I only know what the gods choose to reveal to me. Tell us, where is he? I bring good news to the farmer as a habit. It does not matter that you will never find him, for even if you were to sniff him out and kill him like a mongoose burying its face in a snake's lair, that mongoose will be run over by a chariot. She speaks only nonsense. Even if you were to kill Sassi, it would make no difference. Another would rise to take his place. He will be caught. And he will die. Your prophecies are worthless. For I have the word of Ishtar Barbella, who lets the lamp of amber shine on Esarhaddon and watches him like the crown of her own head. It does not matter what happens to Sassi. It does not matter who is king. It only matters that Esarhaddon is not it is not that Sassi is the legitimate king, only that Esarhaddon is not. For the sprouted seed that cuts down its own tree to make its throne cannot sit on that throne for long. How can I do such a thing? I who revere all the precepts of the gods and check every sign for their disfavour. The stunted sapling never could, but the one who tends... Silence! The torrents of her words must be damned. The king of Assyria should have no fear. Take her away. We have her now. Her locust words will plague this land no more. They are already unleashed, and they will multiply. Silence, or we will have you burned. It does not matter what happens to me now. I was merely a vessel for the words of the god. But now my lid has been opened, and they have all rushed out. Take her away! But keep her alive, so that she may bow to the flayed skin of Sassi, which will soon clothe as her hands thrown. The farmer's land shall become a ruin! Greetings to the farmer, my lord. You whose careful watch has kept Sirius safe. I have something I must tell you, although I am afraid. Tell us. 
feeble words down into the abyss, they will resound in the highest heaven. Tell us. I had long been residing in prison, until two days ago the chief cupbearer sent a cohort to release me. They led me through the streets until we stood in the temple of the Lord of Haran. The cohort commander emerged and led me to an upper room. They drew a seat and I sat down. They gave me wine to drink until the sun set. Moving my seat closer, he said to me, You're an expert in divination? Go perform the following divination before the sun god Shamash. Will the chief eunuch take kingship? I washed myself with water, donned clean garments and performed the divination. I told the commander, he will take kingship. By the gods of the king, my lord, it was a colossal fraud. The only thing I was thinking was, may he not kill me. Now I've come to tell the king, lest the king, my lord, hear about it and kill me. I am bound by the treaty of the king, my lord. I cannot conceal these words. Anyone who tells the truth within my palace will be safe, free. Thank you, my lord. Now go! The goddess collects your foes like butterflies. The anger of the gods is the most obvious conclusion. I have long suspected it myself, yet no one dared to tell me before now. Anger may not be a, a, a curse. I'm glad that you're not afraid to tell me more than what I want to hear. At least you have not given up on me. The illness can be driven out more easily if the patient himself is armed against it. Since you alone do not conceal the truth, tell me, how could the people doubt my strength to rule because of this illness? Have they forgotten my previous actions, my efforts, my care on their behalf? The strength of my body is not equal to that of my mind or spirit. It is a sign without correlation. Your father sowed the seeds of this mob. News of your condition sprouted them. Once the people have turned against you, it does not matter what you do. It is my reputation that matters, not my actions or words. Though a reputation can be made of lies. But you are right to see it as a sign. And it is not the only one. Six times during your reign the moon has disappeared, sending you into hiding, pretending evil for the king. The people feel the darkness as well as you, for when the moon does not illuminate the streets, they are deserted. The illness is like the eclipse, for the body of a king stands for his ruled land. That is why no one has been able to diagnose it, and why no one has brought about its cure. They say I'm not the legitimate king. They may be right. What do you mean? My grandfather was not the heir of the king who came before him. He never spoke of his ancestors, never laid claim to their glory. Instead, he took as his throne name Saga, which means the legitimate king, only because he was not. Shall I fetch a salve? Yes, go. Esar Haddon, have no fear. The future shall be like the past. Okay. Will love's loyalty and abhors treachery. You have barred the palace doors with mountains, as if your heartland were the enemy. As if the mountain laid waste to your heart. If such a heart loves loyalty, what does it know? In its wilds, every creature causes fright. And in the flooded mists of these dense mountains, the haze of treachery hides. True loyalty. And loyalty covers a traitor's heart. The palace knows not one from the other. Suspicion calls of ghosts in every corner, and like an incantation manifests the very ghosts which you seek to escape. For years I have been your royal physician, cared for all your family and children, defeated illness, seen to every cure. Only now this beast confronts me. 
changing shape as if first it had four legs, but then suddenly flowing away like the sea. Only now do you begin to doubt me. Only the warrior of the gods himself could pin such an evasive creature down. And if it were in man's capability of gods, I would have slain it. Cut it down, I whose expertise is the highest in all the land. I who serve the king. This must be the work of the gods. And why? Why would they do it if not for a sign? There is no ex other explanation. And yet everyone believes the newcomer's tale, that some disease has fallen from the sky and crowd around him and kiss his feet. What basis do they have for their esteem? Amid the mists, they think they hear the wings of a lion-headed eagle beating. They cannot see it as a ragged pigeon. All because the king's mother favors him. He increases the king's trouble, and yet the blame is laid on me. This blame has grown like rust upon a weapon. Tomorrow is the time to shear it off. Let the palace be deadly still, before the deluge sweeps over the earth, annihilating man and god like. Why trust one prophecy over another? Who can determine the will of the gods? Perhaps the gods themselves cannot agree. And so it is up to us to decide. I will only do my duty. Prepare poison for a serious reigning king, a cup, to take him to his fate at last. For he has long foreseen his death, and Assyrian prophecies always come true. Sinaresha struck down the lion, which the cloud gave birth to, and eaten it. Good. Has any news of this escaped? None of his associates know about it, and he has killed the herder and the scribe. Have you discovered what this portends? Unfortunately not, my lord. Oh, why not? The tablet is broken. Broken? Are there not other copies in the library? They are all broken in this place, my lord. An apprentice, reshelving the tablets, dropped them and went to Sipper to make new ones, but as yet to return. All the omens of cows giving birth to lions are broken. Can you not infer by analogy? That would be dangerous. For if a goat gives birth to a lion, the king will exercise world rule. But... If a ewe gives birth to a lion, the weapons which were abandoned will be raised. A lion's not great. A symbols of kingship. There are no guarantee of blessing. <coughs> if we cannot unravel what this means, then neither can our friends or our enemies. If news of this strange occurrence gets out, the people will not know what to think, but they'll be afraid for sure. They will say it portends disaster, even though it cannot be confirmed. Their hearts will make association, even though there is no proof for their fear. What will they say? What will the rumours be? Does not the first omen say something about a lion? The first line of Tablet 2, Shuma Isbu, says that if a woman gives birth to a child, and the child has a lion's head, there will be a harsh king in this land. Then all the scholars will know this line by heart. Perhaps some of the people of the palace, too. Shumai Ishbu is difficult to interpret. Its secret message concealed in words no untrained man can understand. 
And only those who are trained can even see the tablet. But only the scholars know that it does not mean what it says. You don't have to be a scholar to know that a monstrous birth must be a sign. None of St. Erish's associates know about it. He has killed the herder and the scribe. You need not worry. No one will hear except the reeds. Nowhere is truly silent. Even this river may carry my words downstream until it overflows its bike and belches them up with the silt. There are those who are trustworthy too. If you fear your own walls, why not these reeds? Why should the king of Assyria squat in mud to hear the omens read to him? I am the farmer, not the king. The enemy is under my roof. I cannot be too careful. The ritual will be performed tomorrow. Soon your enemies will be dead. Come, let us go back into the palace. Those rooms have doors, and who knows what stands behind them? Read me the letters here. The chariot driver of the treasury is trampling on the palace. He has laid his hands on the cone of Ishtar, saying, Strike me, let's see, bring me a knife. The governor of Gazana gathered the elders of the city and asked them, To whom are you devoted? We keep the treaty of the king, they said. He threw the scepter from his hands in rage, wanting their loyalty for himself. Messengers of the king of Elam keep coming to us. We respond, we are the servants of the king of Assyria. O oh, Esarhaddon, whose arms Ishtar of Arbella has filled with favour, could you not rely on the previous utterance I spoke to you? I will banish trembling from my palace. You shall eat safe food and drink safe water and you shall be safe in your palace. I will annihilate whatever enemies you have. As for you, stay in your palace. I will protect you by day and by dawn. I am the Lady of Arbella, to the king's mother. Like a winged bird over its young, I will twitter around you. Like a beautiful lion cub, I will run about in your palace and sniff out your enemies. I will keep you safe. Who, then, is the lone one? Who is the wronged man? Have no fear. Well, shelter is Asahadan, king of Assyria. That last one was for my mother. Why did you bring it to me? For a long time, my lord, I thought it best not to trouble you with anxious news. To tell you what is useful and not to waste your time with worries. But there are matters which you must confront. Things that must not be hidden from your sight. <coughs> she reads your letters, my lord, and worse, acts on your behalf. My lord, the Elamites have invaded the Sealand, and she sends troops to engage them, and the governor writes to her, not you. Of course he knows the Sealand is invaded. Your accusations are absurd. Even by the riverbed, you can't escape the ears of others. Do you really think that I would keep an event of such important secret? That even if I wanted to, I could. How is it then that I have only just found out? You are not as close to Essa Haddon as you would like to think. And you are the one who says the king's worries are paranoid. The king should be the one to lead our armies, not the queen. What will our enemy say of our king? He must be the one seen to do this. The king cannot be everywhere at once. He has enemies to fight on all fronts. Invasion is the first priority. Conspiracy is worse. Internal threats that eat away the kingdom from inside. Conspiracy so preoccupies him that he does not see the real enemy strike. The Elamites will be out by tomorrow. The king should be the one to deal with this. Actions will break his fear. He should go out into battle, not endlessly worry about his symptoms which have no cure. Yes, he should not worry about his symptoms, but focus on uprooting the traitors. Fear of traitors is just as bad as fear of symptoms. Hurthy! Nikia is the only one I trust. The head of my army turned against me. Am I to send him to meet foreign opponents? No. But 
for my mother to muster the troops and keep him here in my palace under my watch. For who better to trust with life and death than the one who brought me into this world? Who has no reason to ever betray me since I am the one who gives her power. She gives you power to get it for herself. Do you really think his brothers could have ruled? <coughs> one too arrogant, the other lazy. They could not have held the reins for long. Esarhaddon is a better king. I raised him up above his brothers, though they were older and in good health. Sons of a wife far lovelier than I. Because I knew that rule required more than they could give, with their pretense of strength. Facades risen which masked incompetent ambition. The people say she has a stranglehold on you, that like a witch she has you bound, that you are weak to be in a woman's power. This is not weak to share the burden of rule. It is the only way to survive. My lord, I merely tell you what the people say. They do not trust her motives either. Why must everyone assume my power is ill-gotten and undeserved? Why must everyone think my intentions are evil? I know what the people say of me. They cannot think that I am just a mother who only wants to help her son. They cannot think it because they hear no sweetness in my words. But love is shown in action, not in sweetness. My love is shown by what I do. And yet the people call me a monster who feeds on power and blood instead of bread. They say I have the head of a lion, a dragon's venom, body of a snake. But this is their reckless imagining. People believe evil slander and gossip more easily than good news and good deeds. I am the victim of vicious rumours without foundation, and these count for more than anything I say or do myself. This slander was created by evil, from how it burns like hungry fire. Your plan for the substitute king is evil, worthy of this creature you describe. That is a matter of high ritual. You pierce your rituals together like one of these monsters. What is this? Tomorrow the substitute king will go to his fate, and the danger will have passed. More will have passed than danger. You do not know what you are saying. You do not know what you are doing. You are no expert in our rituals. Greetings to Esarhaddon, the wise king. Hear my prayer for your well-being. How did you find me? My lord, I have dangerous news. Oh, then speak. I overheard the chief physician now preparing poison for the king. The substitute king will go to his fate tomorrow. The poison is for his cup. Esarhaddon will go to his fate, whom he thinks false as any substitute. Oh, how many are snared in this great net? <coughs> are you sure? Or did I? He said the cup was for the reigning <coughs> king. But the chief physician has been in the king's service far longer than you, or even I. I have seen my husband murdered by his sons. Anyone can turn at any time, with little thought to the number of years. You know well he is filled with rage. Rage against you, who he believes usurped his place, not against the king. Then why were you concerned that he had words with the chief eunuch? Treachery. Ravages houses like a plague with no respect for the number of years. Its sword of pestilence pays no heed to the just words uttered within the walls. Keep close watch over him tonight. We will catch him in the act tomorrow. I will not use any of his potions nor salves. My kitchen is kept closely guarded. But then we shall see at the great banquet when he passes the poison to the substitute king, whether or not he intends to kill me. For I will not accuse a man without proof. For such an accuser is thrown to justice to die in the river ordeal himself. If my chief physician is to die, the people must know that he deserved his fate, and not say that groundless paranoia kills him.
Tonight, the moon god is under attack. The seven demons, unrivaled warriors, are plotting their onslaught against his throne. Their names are unknown. Yes, they are tremendous. They are the burning embers in the forest. They are the unknown terrors of the marsh. They are the vultures that bring dusk to the day. In city after city, they bring darkness. Raging lions, fearsome serpents, dust storms, howling gales that wreak vengeance on the land, rising floods that overwhelm the gods. They are the offspring of the netherworld. They are the poison spittle of the gods. They know not how to spare or save. They pay no heed to prayer or supplication. They turn sweet springs to brackish salt. Turn the mountain stones to dust. They turn abundant pasture into smoke. They paralyze the joints of birds in flight. They flash like lightning on the horizon. Deadly demons approaching with speed. They have seized heaven and earth by their throats. They do not spare heaven. They will not spare earth. The gods have retreated to the heavens in fear, removed themselves to the innermost locations of the seven circle of the moon. you all to wait with me, to endure until the danger has passed. To the health of Esa Haddon, King who wears the crown of sea. To the health of Esa Haddon, King who wears the crown of sea. I invite you all, my chief advisors, my greatest generals, talented administrators to drink with me to the survival of the moon. Hail Seen, Tablet of the Gods. Hail Seen, Tablet of the Gods. Come, let us begin this ritual feast so that the pleasing scent of sacrifice may waft up into the heavens and we may strengthen the God. Hail to Nakia, light among men. Hail to Nakia, Light among men. Are you pleased with my son's service, my lord? More than I ever could have hoped. His knowledge is great. I'm pleased you know in Hughes Babylon's expertise. Uh, how do you he may only speak for the ritual. Do not address him for now. Why does the king not sit up in the sky, but deigns to sit with us, not on his throne? Some subjects say that I am not the true king. Oh, so I've heard. I will not sit on high if the people do not think I deserve it. For as king, I listen to their speech. Besides, I want to sit with you, my friends. For here we have gathered the head of my army, the Shatamu of a Khan. The governors of Babylon, 
bruises on it. Hurrah. My chief physician. And my new exorcist. Who has proved his loyalty over the of the elders. Then, where is Balassi, your chief scholar? He is on holiday, for his health's sake. You wish him a speedy recovery. It must be serious, for Balassi is so rarely ill. No one is immune to the displeasure of the gods. He needs only rest. Why do you not eat, my lord? You must eat for the hate's sake of your health, to keep up strength. What does it matter what the feeble ones eat? For if the gods favor them, they will live. But if not, they will die in spite of nourishment. And you, my lady? I am sated by the scent of sacrifice. Perhaps best for him to wait out the spleen. Best for us all, until scenery appears. In Babylon, the life's land is suppressed. The fields are dark, the pastures deathly still. This is a time for waiting, not for action. But once scenery appears, all will be well. Come. There is no need for us to be sunk in gloom. Soon the archer god will kill the seven, and their blood will pass over the moon in time. And more. We have cause to celebrate. Bring her in! You have seen the prophetess of Sassi. How did you catch her? How did you find her? I searched for her for months to no avail. I overflow with joy that she is caught. I have the help of Ishtar of Arbella whose prophecies are the most true of all. Hail, Hail to Nakia, beloved by, by the gods. But we must not be too quick to rejoice, for while Sassi lives, the king must be on his guard. Sassi lives in the netherworld now. He is dead? When? How? All I know is Sassi is dead. I know not how, nor when, nor where, nor why. You see, there is nothing left to fear. Oh, there is always something to fear. I will not believe it until I see his corpse. The one who lied and said he should be king is dead <coughs> in dust and will now be forgotten. Now Esarhaddon only has himself to fear. Sit her on the throne. She will be the substitute queen. Swear before Shamash, all-seeing sun, that you take all the omens upon yourself, all the portents to afflict the earth, and all the evil writings in the sky. I swear before Shamash, the all-seeing sun, that I take all the omens on myself, all the portents to afflict the earth, and all the evil writings in the sky. You are the ruler of all the countries. I am the ruler of all the countries. Oh, the cunning of my mother surpasses that of the gods. She cannot be matched in ingenuity. To use the source of this rebellion and magic against its own success. Is wisdom never seen before? Now, where is the substitute king? My lord, if you will not eat, you must at least drink. Drink this wine, as we drink to the health of the king. Bring the substitute. King, let's hear you drink with us. He is already here. Me? What? He has performed your rituals in your stead. All these hundred days I have not known. If you had, you would not have agreed. Agreed to what? You are too close. <coughs> you trust him too much. We cannot do away with him. He has been so good to us. What for the waste and effort? All the time it took to scour the land to find an exorcist who not only knows the omens of their rituals, but can also be trusted. We could have used a slave. But this one understands your suffering. And by fully understanding your illness, he can absorb it, and take it with him to the netherworlds, and free you of the demons which beset you all these years. We cannot kill him. He is the only one who dared to tell me the truth. His father is a traitor and must be punished. He knew nothing. All this time he has been our hostage. It is time for him to pay his debt. He cannot die. He must not live. Else the omens will fall on you. 
This ritual will have been for nothing. You will take the gods' anger on yourself and you will be the one to die. My son! I swear before Shamash, all-seeing son, that I take all the omens upon myself, all the portents to afflict the earth, that Esarhaddon is the rightful king. He is the only one who values truth, no matter how evil it may appear. He is the one who seeks it out while the palace is all paralyzed by fear. Great gods elevated him above his brother, saying, This is the successor. He questioned the gods by divination. They answered with a firm affirmative, saying, You are Sennacherib's heir. Jealousy seized his brothers. They forsook the gods and trusted in their own conceit. They started evil rumours and slander against him, against the will of the gods, and murdered their own father in cold blood so they could seize the throne themselves. They butted like young goats in squabbling for the kingship. But Esarhaddon did not fear the snow and ice of winter, and like a great and powerful eagle spread his wings to avenge his father. Fear of his awesome radiance overwhelmed them. When they saw his mighty battle array, his enemies begged for his sovereignty. He will not be caught by conspiracy. He knows your plans, can preempt all your moves, for he who had to struggle for his kingdom knows what he must do to keep it strong. He is the terrifying master fowler, and we the fowl that fly into his net. The palace thrashes, tangled in fear, and cannot move when action is needed most. But thrashing only tightens bonds and cuts our flesh. And so now, I will play my part. I will take action. I will do what's best. I take all the omens upon myself, all the evil writings in the sky, all the portents to afflict the earth. I am the one who rules all the countries. Hail, Esarhaddon, bring her peace. My sin is brought to light. Taste the poison. You're a weakling, King. You only rule because your mother willed it. Then am I not like a god? You're the cow that gave birth to the qualities. Then you say I have the face of a lion. Moans grievously, the moan moans grievously in his fold. The Lord of the lands, boundless one, the Lord of the lands, whose word is true. The Lord of the lands, who cannot can challenge. And the Lord, whose pronouncement cannot be changed, has poured out the seed of the mountain upon us, 
has caused the hordes to descend upon us. The great, the great mountain has torn down our doors. The great mountain has torn down our walls, turned faithful houses into reed huts, has lifted his hand against faithful sons. Enlil has lifted his hand against our sons, has parched the throat of the man of the well, has killed the supplicant at his own shrine. Lord of the nations, how long will your heart be enraged? Father Enlil, who gazes fiercely, how long will your eyes be transfixed? How long will you keep your head shrouded? How long will you keep your mind dark? How long will you close your ears? You have smitten the land, completely destroyed it. The ewe has abandoned her lamb. The goat has abandoned her kid. The sun does not shine on the lands. The moon does not rise above Suma. The grey pit is filled with our blood. The treasure house turned into ruins. You have turned away from your city. When will you return? And then, though, you have turned away from your temples. When will you return? You called on the moon. You called forth to the corner. The people at the corner are killed. You called forth to the side. The people at the side are killed. You called forth to clay pits. They have been filled with blood. You called forth to the treasure house. It has been turned into room. Queen of heaven, whose strength is sublime, whose fearsome glow is the light of mankind, Ishtar. We beseech you, daughter of sea, you who can make the wives of great kings afraid, who can turn harmonious brothers against each other. I call upon you, your exhausting drinker, Accept my entreaty, my wretched prayer. Have mercy on my miserable person. Have mercy on my heart, stricken with grief, which is disturbed like mud clouded water. Have mercy on my anguished household, which trembles within the earth that quaked. How long will my opponents bear at me? With lies and evil falsehoods plotting my death. For the weak who have grown strong, and I have grown weak. I churn like a wave boiled by adverse winds. Death and misery have a hold of me. My sanctuary is empty, deathly still, ghastly heart has fallen upon my heart. My heartfelt prayers have gone up answered, and uprising has been my reign's reward. If the substitute king took evils aimed at me down to the netherworld with him, I dread to think what I would have suffered in its place. But still my troubles increase. The conspirators are dead, and there's no peace. And the gods have not removed this 
illness from my skin. Great goddess, may my heart burn clear again. May my snuffed out torch burst into flames. You wish to see me, my lord? Have any signs been seen in the sky? No, nothing. Though I have kept a close watch. You must have observed something in the sky. It is the month to keep watch on the sun. The eclipse which you wrote and asked about did not occur. Twice more we will keep watch. On the 28th of Simanu and Kislimu. Hence we will have the sun's watch for two months. Nothing has risen. Nothing has appeared. With deep anxiety, I have nothing to report. As soon as I have rooted one of belly, another sprung up in its place. As soon as the moon eclipsed past, my mother fell ill, and now none can heal her. And the one who could before is dead. The exorcists work night and day for her. Tonight they'll perform the ritual Ushmuruda, the breaking of the curse. She will get better, for no demon is a match for Nakir. I am surrounded by wretches and fools who do not dare tell me the truth. When kings of old fell ill, their servants stayed up with them all night and carried them in litters. I lived alone in the dark. As it's she. Who rules in Nineveh? Was she not? The Crown Prince Ashurbanipal, my lord. I hope my son is quick to learn to rule. For there are no overseers left to trust. Ashur and the great gods have delivered those criminals who plotted against you. Now those who broke the oath are gone. But they have made everybody hateful in your eyes, smearing them like a tanner with fish oil. Your alert servants who remembered your orders will die of a throbbing heart. Remember those who were loyal to you. Your highest ranking officials are dead. The guards and palace watchmen you sent to their fate out of fear. Now everybody fears your frown will turn on them, and chaos reigns amid the empty ranks. Oh, better chaos than ordered evil. I know you've been loyal to me for last night. You are the only one who will stand up to make it out of care for me. I am glad to see you restored to your former place. I rejoice to be at your side, my lord. How is the king's health? For three days you have stayed in the dark. Your servants are worried for you. My arms and legs are entirely without strength. I cannot lift them even in prayer. It hurts to open my eyes. Swollen and inflamed, they shut up the light. brought you for three days. Why does the king not eat? You stay in the dark longer than Shamash. Is one day not long enough to starve? It is the will of the gods. I am cursed. I know what the omens of my body signify, Balassi. But no physician has yet found the cause of your disease. We're yet to find the source of this ailment. Tanki told me. I know it is a curse. It is not falling sickness. He was wrong. I never believed this nonsense. That is why I did not tell you. Have you fallen since I ran? No. Headaches and dizziness only. They do not count. Your limbs stay silent and your mouth stays dry. The name of the illness does not matter. The illness itself is a sign. 
they cannot be the legitimate king. The ghetto of my royal line was not a crown prince, but a usurper. Sargon! Why would he take the legitimate king of his throne name unless he was not? What does it matter to the truly great? He named himself after the greatest king the northern land has ever seen. To obscure the fact they belonged to his brother. Sargon of a cat also seized his throne. My grandfather should have known how Sargon's story ended. For by adopting his name, cursed me with his grandson's fate. For I am like Naram Si, that cursed ruler, that mighty ruler who repelled the hordes and was like a god in his victories. Yet was cursed by later generations as the downfall of his father's empire. The prophetess did not seek to uproot the seed of Sargon, but a Sennacherib. And as for you, look at what you have done for Assyria. Your deeds are the true measure of your reign. This grudge is not of rebels, but of the gods. The rebels were but another side. As for my brothers who fought against me and all the evils I have endured. My wife went to her fate before her time. The wife I loved so much that none could replace her. Oh, my nearly died of heartbreak. So many eclipses during my reign. The gods hate me and they show me thus. That I'm on the point of death is no surprise. The illness is but another sign. All signs can be undone. Do not lose hope. My hope has flown up. <laughs>